mm, oh, wow, j- j- just wow, the episode five of WandaVision was crazy, like crazy, and there is just so much to talk about here, but I want to make this clear, do not watch this video if you have not yet seen episode five of WandaVision, because there is some huge stuff that goes down in this episode that you do not want to be spoiled about. But now that you've been warned, hopefully, if you're still watching, you've seen the episode, because we got a lot to talk about here. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. Because we start off the episode where we see that Wanda and Vision, they're now parents, they're raising their kids, they're raising Tommy and Billy, but for some reason the babies won't stop crying. And even Wanda's magic trying to put them to sleep doesn't do anything, so I think that goes to prove that she really doesn't have 100% control of this reality. And probably some other entity, like maybe Mephisto, also has control as well. Because there has to be somebody that actually created this in the first place. But then Agnes just shows up out of the blue. And this is where things get weird. Like, really weird. Because then, like, everything stops. And she's like, oh, should we take it from the top? And it's like, what is going on here? And then Vision starts questioning things again. He's going to be that character that just keeps questioning things until the mystery is unraveled fully here. But then things get even crazier when the babies actually disappear. And it's like, well, where'd they go? And then they turn around and Billy and Tommy are standing right there and they're not babies anymore. All of a sudden they're like five-year-old kids. And yeah, so I mean, we knew we were they were going to be aging up through the decades and stuff, but I didn't think it would just be like they can age up whenever they can whenever they want to. But apparently that's a thing here. So that's pretty interesting to see. Uh, but then we do lead into the intro for this episode, which I was missing out on last week, but this episode was intro was really cool got some nice music going on and i haven't seen family ties in a while but i believe the intro was very similar to the intro on family ties um because that is what this episode is based on it's set in the 80s and based on family ties so that was really cool but then we get some really interesting stuff and photos of like baby wanda and baby vision even though vision never actually was a baby we also get get to see vision as the easter bunny and santa claus so that was all awesome to see and then one of my favorite shots of this was how we had a birthday cake for tommy and billy that had candles that said one two three four five because if you think about it, they had to celebrate five different birthdays at once for both of them because they automatically aged up five years which is just crazy to think about but then we flash over to the real world world and the sword perspective here as we were introduced to last week and monica finally wakes up from i don't know if it was like a coma or or basically just from getting out of westview and there is a briefing at sword hq where you're going to break down everything they know so far And this is where we get some interesting info about Wanda. Like, for example, her parents. So her parents' names are Yurina and Olog or Oleg Maximoff. So I guess that means that we're not going to be getting Magneto as her father in the MCU, which is all right. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, So we finally know their names, and there are a lot of theories that maybe the two people in the commercials that we keep seeing are possibly... um, you know, actually her parents, so that is totally possible there, but then director Hayward, he goes on talking about Wanda, and basically seems like he is not a big fan of Wanda, and he doesn't like her at all, and he just wants to take her out, and, you know, he clearly, he has something against her, and I'm gonna get into talking about that more later, because I have an interesting theory about it, but clearly something is up with this guy, and he's got to have some sort of ulterior motives here. But then we actually see this security footage from Sword HQ where we find out that Vision's corpse was being held at the Sword HQ after the battle in Wakanda. Hopefully they were trying to rebuild him. But then nine days ago, Wanda came in and stole his body. So first of all, that confirms that this whole Westview thing has been going on for nine days at this point. But also she literally kidnapped his body, which... I mean, she. we knew she was depressed from losing him, but I, I didn't think she'd actually kidnap his body. And does that mean that this vision we're seeing in Westview is his real body just reanimated? So it's really interesting to think about there, though. 
But then we switch over to the Westview perspective uh, once again, and we see Billy and Tommy, they're now around the age of five or six years old, and they have brought home a dog that they fi- found crying outside, and of course, they were able to c- convince Juan and Vision, like, oh, we need a puppy, because, you know, we're kids, and we're all so adorable, and you'll just let us do what we want, so then that's what they did, and then a little, I think it's so funny, because I literally just made a video about this yesterday, about Sparky appearing in the series and he did because they named the dog Sparky after he you know makes sparks come out of the outlet and I think it was a really cool way of doing it because in the comics Sparky is a robot dog but that really wouldn't have made much sense here so it was cool to see you know just the easter eggs of like naming him Sparky and stuff so that was really cool to see Sparky here even though obviously he 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 didn't make it too long but it, it was still cool to see Sparky here but then Vision said Vision and Juan agree that you know the kids are too young to have a dog they don't have that responsibility yet so they'd have to you know be, wait until they're around like maybe age 10 and then they're like all right and then they automatically age up to age 10 um so, so that was crazy like that that was one of the craziest things in this episode about these characters is that they can just age up whenever they want so that's pretty crazy and then Again, on the sword side of things, we see that Darcy call, starts calling the anomaly the hex because of all the hexagons. So just as we saw in Jimmy with Jimmy Woo last episode, they are picking up on all these hexagons that we have as well. So Darcy is officially called this the hex. So I think that's a pretty cool name for it. And then Monica's Monica goes to check on her clothes that she was wearing when she came out of Westview. And turns out the pants and clothes are all real not only that but they are bulletproof so this confirms that wanda is officially rewriting reality so whatever happens inside of westview even if it leaves westview it is still the same and it is still 100 real which is crazy so that means when tommy and billy leave westview they are real people which is definitely different from the comics origin but i like it because it makes sense with this story And then again, in Westview, we get some really, really interesting parts. This is where things really start to heat up because Norm and Vision, they're working again. Vision still has no idea what they're actually doing at work. Um, But all of a sudden, they get an email from S.W.O.R.D. because, yes, they're in the 80s. They have computers now and and email. So they get an email from S.W.O.R.D. at work. And then all of a sudden, everyone in the office starts reading it out loud in sync. And then at the end, they just start laughing like that's creepy so that that's kind of weird and then vision like he he puts his hands on norm and restores him and basically restores his memories similar to how we saw him do that to agnes in the first trailer for wandavision and then she said norm says like oh she she's in my she's in my head and she's hurting me and that is obviously a reference to wanda because she's forcing them to be there and she's forcing them to stick to this whole sitcom vibe which is crazy so then vision sets him back to normal just to keep things in balance i guess and vision was already questioning things but now he knows for sure what is going on here but meanwhile wanda we we see some more shady stuff with her because we find out that it's actually saturday so why is vision at work well wanda has actually sent vision to work on a saturday to distract him because she noticed he was questioning things so oh maybe if if he goes to work he'll forget about that but he doesn't no he he thinks about it all day and he finds even more clues at work and then Wanda starts talking about Pietro again to her twins. And it seems like every time he brings, she brings up Pietro, something goes wrong. And something definitely goes wrong. Because they start hearing something outside. I was like, oh my god, guys. It's Evan Peters Quicksilver. Pietro is showing up. But no, they, they just went outside. And there was a drone out there. Because S.W.O.R.D. had sent in a drone that somehow was made from 80s technology. I didn't know they had drones in the 80s. But apparently they did. And clearly, Wanda does not like this thing. So, then Hayward is like, take the shot. And it's like, bro, you evil. Uh, Like, clearly, she, he wants her dead. And I'm going to talk about this more in my Who Dat Devil episode 5 this week. About my theory on that. But I think that maybe instead of him actually being Mephisto, maybe he made a deal with Mephisto. And now he regrets that. So, he thinks that maybe if he kills Wanda, then that will all revert back to normal. 
that's just a, a little sneak peek of my theory there. Um, so again, stay tuned for that. But then all of a sudden we get a perimeter breach at Sword. Everybody goes outside. They're all lined up. They got all their guns pointing at at Westview. And then Wanda literally walks out of Westview. And she's wearing her full Infinity War Scarlet Witch outfit. Which I don't know how she had time to change into that. But she's wearing it. And she is not happy. She was very angry. She drags the drone out and tosses it in front of them. And she, basically she gone crazy. Like she got the accent again. And then uh, she basically threatens them, like, don't mess with me again. And then as she walks back into Westview, she changes the force field to red, which I don't know what that means. Like, it could just be, ooh, changing colors. It looks prettier or something. But probably it means, like, maybe it won't be as easy to get in there or something. That's what I'm assuming that means. But then Wanda gets back into Westview, and she's all of a sudden back in sitcom mode. Like, there is no transition there. It's, as soon as she walks in, she is full-on sitcom Wanda once again. But then we are struck with some bad news as Agnes has found Sparky in her bushes, and um, he ate some leaves, and that's not good for a dog. So Sparky didn't make it. Rest in peace, Sparky. Very unfortunate loss there. But then Vision gets home, and of course, of course he's like, oh, that's sad and everything, Sparky's gone. But then after the kids go to bed, Vision literally calls out Wanda for everything that she is doing. And this was a huge moment, because they've never had a fight before, except uh, unless you consider Civil War. But this is like a full-on actual fight. So they fight, and they don't actually like physically fight each other. It's you know like an actual regular married couple fight. But then the doorbell rings. I was like, oh my god, guys. This is it. This is the moment that they've been building up to. That big surprise cameo that everyone has been teasing. So they open the door. And you just see him from the back at first. And you automatically know that it is Pietro. But is it Aaron Taylor Johnson? Or is it Evan Peters? Then he turns around. And it is Evan Peters. And I love how Dar Darcy was watching this. And she literally said, Wanda, recast him. So because that is kind of funny because that is something they used to do on old sitcoms like they would bring in new actors to play characters and never even address it at all and just be like hey new actor deal with it so that's basically what they're doing here and I don't know how to feel about this because I really would have liked to have seen Aaron Taylor Johnson back as Quicksilver I really liked his version of Quicksilver I'm not really the biggest fan of Evan Peters Quicksilver um I, and I don't know why Aaron Taylor Johnson wouldn't want to return. I mean, it's freaking Marvel. Why would you not? But for some reason, Evan Peters is Quicksilver. And I'm going to assume he's going to be Quicksilver going forward in the MCU. But how is he back, though? Because we know Wanda brought Vision back to life. But she did that. Quicksilver, she had no idea he was going to show up. And it was a huge surprise to her. So Quicksilver is just there. And he he has the accent as well. And I love how he calls Vision a popsicle. Like, hey, who's the popsicle? And yeah, so that that's where the episode ends. It ends on that huge cliffhanger right there, which was absolutely insane. And, and again, this was something we were theorizing about. And Quicksilver was actually leaked in uh, one of those spoilers and leaks from last week. And I was accidentally spoiled about that. So I knew he was coming but this was a crazy reveal, and I just absolutely love this. And I just love this episode overall because there was some huge stuff going on here. Again, like I said, I loved seeing Sparky, even though it didn't last too long. It was cool to see how the twins were able to age up whenever they wanted to. Wanda literally walking out of Westview. And then, of course, big old reveal of Quicksilver. So I'm going to be interested to see how that plays into next week's episode because we know that he's going to be like the fun uncle for Tommy and Billy and next week's episode is going to be set in the 90s and based off of Malcolm in the Middle. So I am really, really excited for this. And of course, again, stay tuned for my next episode of Who Dat Devil coming this Sunday, episode five. But for now, guys, let me know down in the comments below. What did you think about episode five of WandaVision. Let me know all your thoughts and theories. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please drop like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep up to date on F.